and welcome to another episode of Engineer to Engineer. Today on Engineer to Engineer, our Motion Systems Application Engineer, Chuck Leonard, will be demonstrating how to wire and connect the I.O. ports on our RS series actuators. This demonstration will be broken into two episodes, so be sure to check back for part two. Now on to Chuck. Now our RS series is one of our uh, complete lines of single axis actuator robots that are fully programmable. And some nice features about this actuator is that it's got a digital I.O. port. Now one of the things with this digital I.O. port, when you order it, the standard cable that comes with it is a very nice two meter long ribbon cable. But when you get into this ribbon cable and making a termination connection to this thing, you end up with a thing that looks like a Medusa's head in trying to make a connection. And what we've basically got here is we have two 20 conductor ribbon cables and one is your input and one is your output. They have a very similar color code which is basically identical. So if you're paying attention while you're wiring this thing and connecting it into your panel, uh, this is sort of one we pulled from a panel. We've actually labeled it inputs and outputs. We've got it set up here now. Uh, which inputs and outputs we're actually going to use. We put ferrules on the end because we have a basically a 22 gauge wire here or a 24 gauge wire. But these wires are very frail. They're very little on the fragile side. Uh, inside of an electrical panel, this is not something I really want to deal with. So one of the things that we've come up with at Masumi, just to make it a little bit easier for you to get away from having to deal with this type of wiring and the possibility of having confusions as to which wire is which, because you've got multiple colors here. On each of these cables, there's four reds and four browns and four blues, and it could just get really uh, become an issue as far as what wire is which. So we're going to set this thing away and set it aside. And what we've come up with uh, through Masumi USA, we've got a couple of different types of terminal block systems. Now these terminal blocks are basically are designed to use a standard dual inline uh, insulation displacement type connector. This one is actually a 40 conductor connector. And then we also have a simple little 20 conductor co connector. Now these are available at most electronic shops uh, through any electronic supplier. Um, Sumi USA also has these available. And another thing that we're looking at here is this is our terminal block. Now this gives us the advantage here is we can plug this connector directly into this. And it gives us a nice screw terminal which is going to make this very nice uh, clean installation inside of our panel. And what's really nice about this thing, it's a den rail mounted so you can clip it onto the den rail, the standard den rails like you'd use in your panel. And what I'm going to do is we're going to quick, real quickly show you how we put these things together. Now this is how your cable would come stock. What you've got is you've got uh, basically the two 40 pin conductors. Uh, this cable is two meters long, so depending on how you're setting up your panel, you're going to have quite a bit of extra cable. So what I'm going to do with this, now one thing I want to note to this, uh, this cable is made so that it's easy to split apart. So about every 100 millimeters, it's split loose, and then it's seamed together here where these are tied together. What I want to do is I want to get it one of these connectors, or these spots, where all the wires are all fused together. So I'm going to trim off our excess wire. Simple pair of scissors is all you need. You can use a pair of uh, metal shears or you can use a simple razor knife. Well now we've got our, our, our I.O. cable shortened to the length that we want to put inside of our panel. Next thing is so we want to identify which one's the input, which one's the output. Now in the manual it states on this connector that we have an indicator marker for pin number one. What pin number one tells you that is that's your first uh, pin on the connector. It's also going to be uh, your wire number one or A1 which is your input side. So if you hold your connector down with this indicator up, the top wire is your input side and the bottom wire is your output side. So what we want to do is we're going to take these two connect wires, take our input, put our input toward the front, put our output outputs wire to the back. Now we've got these wires lined up so that we're starting out with the brown and we end with the black. So we've got inputs on this side, outputs on this side. Then we take this connector 
and you'll note that this connector has got a stub on it and I've taken and I've highlighted it. It's got a mark for the pin number one. I've highlighted it with a marker just to make it a little more clear. What we want to do is we're going to slide these two wires inside of our connector here so that we end up with black on one end and brown on the other. Input to the left, output to the right. As you can see, these connectors can get a little squirrely on you. So as we pinch it in there and just kind of hold it in place, get the other connector, make sure I got it in the right position, brown to black, black on the end. We slide this connector in so that it is lined up right next to the other connector. And I've got it so the insulate or the wires are sliding through just a little bit them out of the way. Now, as you see this, pin number one is marked by this wire here, on the, by this indicator. It's toward the back here because when we get done with this, we're going to actually flip this cable over. So now, once I've got this in here, there's a lot of specialty tools that are designed for doing this type of crimping. Uh, I've used these uh, pair of duck build type pliers. They've worked very successfully with me for years. And basically, I just slide the cable in there, make sure all the wiring's in straight, and I give it a little squeeze. Now, what we've done is we've locked the connector and the wiring in place. Now, I've got a little bit left over here on the outside that I want to trim off. Just take a simple razor knife, kind of saw through it, trim that excess wire off. Now, We've got a strain relief on these cables, so we will roll our cable over like this, and we will take this little uh, locking clamp, which is a strain relief. That goes on the top. Simple squeeze with our pliers here, and that locks that in place. Now, what this has given us now is we have a 40 pin conductor uh, connector and our I.O. point here they're going to go straight into our robot. So if we were to have this mounted in our panel, we can snap this connector in. This would be mounted into our panel. And then this would be mounted, and this would be where our termination and our wiring would go. We can take this, got a couple locking levers, we open these up. We can snap this in. and we stock this down and it's locked in place and you're not going to be able to pull that cable out. Now what this has given us is nice, simple screw terminals for uh, mounting our, our I.O. inputs and outputs to our robot. Now your first 20 conductors here are going to be your inputs and 21 uh, to 40 will be your outputs. Now so this is everything all done in one unit. Well that does it for part one of our two-part series on wiring I.O. ports. Stay tuned for part two tomorrow. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on all of our brand new content. Also, be sure to check out our social media and our blog. You can find the links to those in the description below. If you have a video of your build using Masumi parts, leave a link to it in the comments below and we'll feature it in a playlist on our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.